Okay, so we're going to continue on um, introduction to functions. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we'll investigate the lifespan of a variable within a function or outside of a function, which sometimes we call the scope of a variable. So we've seen when we declare a variable within, let's say, a function like in main. Let's say I do this and um, int a, right? So here's a variable. And then I can go ahead and declare, I just declared it. So now I can go ahead and assign a value for a, let's say 23. And then I can go ahead and display, right? The value of a, a equal, and that would be a and l. Not a problem here. We're able to handle this variable. We're able to uh, uh, access that memory location and display its content. So let's go ahead and compile and run, see, see this, how it runs. As you can see, the local variable A, so again, it's called a local variable. Now, the reason it's called a local variable, it's because it has been declared within a function. <clears throat> so this here, we declare a local variable. So declare, let me spell that better. There you go. So that means it was defined within a certain function. So let's say I have another function, right? Remember, if, if I'm going to write a function, another function other than main, I could fully define it before main or write a prototype before main and then define the actual function after main. So let's say I have this void, and let's call the function foo for now, okay? And we're going to go ahead and declare int b. And let me close the curly break, uh, bracket for a second here, just, just to make sure we understand. This is the delineation or the delimiter for when this function ends. Now notice this function does not return anything, so it has a void, so no return statement. Uh, needed here, unlike main, needs to return an integer since we have an int in front of it. Now we could do a whole bunch of things here. Uh, what can I do? Well, I could do this. I could go ahead and set a value, b equals 7, and then output b equals b, just like we did in main, right? So end up. Now, this is not going to run by itself. It, this program will compile. There shouldn't be any errors. Let's watch. So let's compile it. As you can see, there are no errors. And if I try to run it, as you guessed it, the b equals 7 will not show up because we did not call the function foo from main or from anywhere. So that function has been defined but not used. So we did not use the function foo yet. So where can we use the function foo? Well, you're going to have to call it from within a function. And it happens to be main for now. It's another function. Uh, so we can call it. Can you call it from within itself? Yeah, but it's not going to run. <laughs> you, you have to have a starting point, again, where to call foo. Now, the trick about calling foo from within itself, right, um, uh, we're going to get into that some other time uh, when we compare iterative style of programming. Okay, uh, So that is not something we need to worry about right away. However, I do need to call foo right here. So maybe right here. Now, let's suppose I wanted to call foo outside of main. right? Let's say right here. And the way you would call it, since it has a, a void, you would do something like this. Right? But that's wrong. Again, it has to be within a procedure to call the function. Otherwise, this is going to be considered a prototype. And as a matter of fact, right now, I'm not sure even if the compiler will accept that. There you go. You get an error. Okay? So this is not going to work in this manner. So you have to call it within a function. In our case, let's call it right here, foo semicolon. So now that is what we call a function call. 
okay? So again, this here is a function definition, okay? And this here is a function call. So you will have to call foo from within a procedure or another function, such as main. Main has a special name. Remember, I told you it was called the controlling function, okay? So um, the, from the controlling function, we can call as many functions as we need, as long as they have been defined, and as many times as we want, okay? All right, so let's see how this behaves now. Now that I have a statement that says call foo, which means get out of main, go ahead and execute these, these lines of code. So let's see what happens now when we compile and run this. And there you have it. Now, b equals 7 is being displayed. Uh, let me separate, put a little space right here so they're not crunched up. Let me compile and run again. Okay, here you go. Now, a and b are still local variables within each of their own functions, their own functions. So this is, again, we declared a local variable that belongs to foo, nobody else. Now let's try to access b from here. Now if you were trying to do b equals, right, so from here, b equals uh, minus 1 you will get an error. B was never defined in main. B is not a local variable within main. Yes, we've declared B before we even wrote main and so on, right, at the top. It doesn't matter. Any variable that you declared within a function, it's local to that function, and that's it. It can't be directly shared. Now, there are ways to share data, and we'll get to that in the next videos. But right now, we need to make a clear distinction as to what a local variable is, and then we're going to see what a global variable in a few minutes. So right now, if I try to compile this, I should get an error. So compile, and there you have it. B, undeclared, first use of this function. So basically, what it's saying is, I don't know what you're trying to do. You never declared B within main. I don't even know where it's at. And you say, well wait, well, wait a minute. I wrote int b as I declared it within foo. Yeah, it lives within foo, and that's it. That means when you call foo, b comes to life. Listen to this. This is what we call the scope or the lifespan. When you get out of foo, you no longer have access to that memory location. And point in, uh, uh, the point of that is, as soon as I got out of foo, which means this is my next line, right? I have no access to it. Now... Even if you try to do it before, let's cut it and try to do it right here, for example. I will still get an error because B was never defined without, within foo. So let me compile, and there you have it. You get an error and get in here. Now you're going to say, well, wait a minute. Couldn't I do this? Let me just cut it here again and try to access it globally, right? So you will get an error. B was never declared. So compile, and again, you never told it what B is, right? So if you need a global variable, you need to give it a data type, and a global variable is usually written outside of all these functions. So if that's what you want to do, then let's go ahead and have an int C, and you can give it any, you could give it a value now, or you could access it later, whatever you want. So if you say int C equals, Eight, you could initialize it, right? Um, can we access C from any of these functions? The answer is yes. I can access C from foo. So CL, the global variable C equals C and L. And let's see if we can access it from foo. So let me compile and run now. And there you have it. Now, if it's accessible to foo, is it accessible to main? Absolutely. So we could do that in here as well. And the global variable C as seen by foo as a function. 
And then here, we're going to do C out the global variable C as seen by main as a function equals okay so let's see what happens compile and run and there you have it so the global variable that you've declared outside of any of these functions is accessible to these functions so that means you can peek into it read it can you write to it the answer is yes you can not only just read it but you can also write to that memory location and from anywhere from in, within any of these functions right so let's try to do it in here let's do us let's alter the value of c right here c equals minus 33 and let's see if that will have an effect right uh, uh on what you would see in main and what you would see in foo so let's go ahead and do that compile and run and notice they both have minus 33 and that is because i altered c before i printed it out to the screen within main and before i called foo okay now so you could strategically do a whole bunch of things here what if i change this value let me cut it here right here right before you call foo so main will see it as eight and foo will see it as minus 33 but when you come back it will be minus 33 so if you do this again let me just copy this right so we want to see it again when we come back out of foo uh, after coming back from foo so it sounds like we went on a journey right and, and indeed because what happens is we're going to learn about stack management in the future uh you know what is what really is going on with memory as you call a function uh, so right now I'm trying to keep it simple. So just just let's pay attention to the behavior Right here. So watch what happens when we come back. It is 33 no longer 8 So the last change you, you you've given to C is what will be in that memory location Now can I change the value of C again instead of here? in foo and the answer is yes, you could do it right here as well. So you could do something like this oops command v oops no no the wrong thing c equal there you go c equal minus 33 all right and let's put a semicolon here and let's see what happens right so what's going to happen first c is 8 great your program starts in main not in full so you're going to go ahead and display A, right? And you will be displaying also the value of C as seen by main. So you will get that first value of A. Then you're going to call foo. And foo, what it will do, it will alter C, right? So it will display its own B, which is its own local variable. Then it will show us what the value of C is after it altered it, right? And then when we come back, we should get that minus 33 in main as well for C. So you could write to that memory location, if it's a global variable, within any function. So you're gonna to say to yourself, okay, well, that's great. That means uh, you no longer need to manage memory the way you think, uh, uh, you know, so especially later on when we start passing by value and by reference, you're gonna to try to put everything global. No, bad idea. We'll, we'll talk about again why global variables try to use them as sparingly as possible. There are many, many reasons why global variables are not recommended. Uh, uh, you know, they, they have their use. Don't get me wrong. But try to avoid them as much as you can and try to use local variables 
if you want a value to be passed to another function. You could pass by value, or if you want a memory location to be passed by another uh, function so you can actually have access to that variable, uh, you can pass by reference. Uh, hence, we're going to get into uh, pointer notations and so on. So anyway, going back to what we're observing here, is that indeed, uh, by the time you got back into main, when you left foo, your global variable c has changed to minus 33. And that was altered after you called foo. Obviously, the alteration happened within foo right here. Okay? All right, so the point is, you have full access to a global variable. So this is what we call a global variable. Okay. Notice I initialize it. It all depends what you want to do with it. Uh, there are times where initializing it is a good idea. There are times where if you don't initialize it, there are some rules. What happens really, what gets stored in a global variable if you don't initialize it? Now, what gets stored in a local variable if you don't initialize it? Right? Because when you declare a variable, what you're saying in essence is reserve a certain amount of space or memory based on the data type you're using, right? If it's an integer, uh, you might be getting four bytes for it, maybe eight, depending on what kind of, what kind of integer floats. Obviously, you're going to get uh, eight bytes or maybe more, depending if it's a double, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? So if it's a char, you get a byte, um, and, and, and it goes on. So, uh, but there's always something in memory left over from a previous program for something you were doing in RAM. Uh, but when you declare something global versus local, this would be a good exercise. Don't initialize them and try to see what's in them. So this will be a great exercise. So jot this down. Go ahead and declare local variable. Don't initialize it and declare a global variable, don't initialize it, and try to access them and see what's in them, right? So you're either going to get zero or you're going to get some random number stored in there or some value stored in there, okay? Uh, so you're going to have to tell me. Uh, you could write it up in the, uh, in the uh, feedback uh, in the video. Uh, this, I believe, is going to be on YouTube uh, as to what your results were and why. Okay, it's important to under, try to understand why I did that. Okay, so on that, I'll leave you alone now because what we're going to do next time is we're going to go ahead and have, uh, so go ahead and do the exercise like I told you, Bill. Uh, this is why I'm leaving you alone. But what's going to happen is the next video, we're going to learn how to pass by value. Okay, now I might do a pass by reference but I will reserve the depth or going in depth with that after I go through pointers. So we'll have a separate uh, set of lessons on pointers after we're done with the basic functions. And we're going to come back to functions uh, using pointers and passing by value, uh, basically passing by reference and passing by value. Uh, those are going to be extremely important in C++ because you have that much control over memory. Okay, I will see you then.